Yesterday evening, the novices gathered at the water pavilion for nampana and besacha, or food with medicinal property. Then Pra Ajahn divided the novices into groups to do social service activity. Some swept the ground, while others cleaned the Upasata Hall. The wind and the clouds brought a drizzling rain providing cool weather for the evening chant. Let's not to anger or ill will, which harm upon another, even as a mother protects with her life. After the evening chant, Pra Ajahn had the novices do a sitting meditation in order to be calm for tonight's upcoming lesson. Last night, the novices were allowed to meet Pra Ajahn Basano, the abbot of Apayakiri Buddhist Monastery, whose preceptors are Ajahn Cha, Pra Ajahn Gewali, and other Pra Ajahn from Wat Chat. The novices paid homage to the Pra Ajahn. Pra Ajahn asked the novices about their lives and had them review the lessons from the past three weeks. First week was to learn, second week was to live, third was to love, this week is to, this week is to let go. Pra Ajahn allowed the novices to ponder and have Dhamma discussions about the meaning of let go. Then the novices shared their thoughts with Pra Ajahn. Do you understand what the word let go means? Let go is to know that everything comes and goes. Uh, nothing, nothing is permanent, and to learn not to be sick with something and okay. and know how to let things go. So if you have a habit that you like do too much of it, like you like for example, you you ha you kept that for like a lot of days and years. And Yeah, go ahead. And then you like, and then he will tell you, let go of it, it's so old, and you're like, no. You have to let go of it because nothing is permanent. Okay, very good. Pra Ajahn explained the meaning of let go, and also provided an example for a better understanding. There's many, when we say let go, it's not just one thing. Uh, so it's like in... And, and it's also one of the things that's important in, in, in Buddha's practice. Um, there's a, a way of, of, say, of gauging or knowing if something is, is, is doing it in the proper way or right way. Because sometimes you can say, let go, okay, I'm going to let go. Uh, like your, your teachers ask you to do some homework and you say, oh, I'm just going to let go and then don't bother to do the homework. And that's not very good. You have to pay, be, be, uh, pay attention to, am I letting go in the right way? Then Pra Ajahn kindly explained to the novices how to check if they really understood the meaning of let go. Uh, so we can know even the good things uh, and then to let go. The things that are, are not so good, you have to know that and then let go as well. I'm sure in three weeks of living together, 
you probably all heard or said something to each other that was kind of irritating or not so pleasing. I'm sure that that's a, it's just how human beings are, isn't it? So just knowing that and then letting go, not holding on to it, because sometimes we define people by the things that they say and we don't have a big picture. We just pick on, we pick out certain things that we either like or we dislike and then we hang on to that and then we define people by that. And that's a problem, isn't it? Then Pra Ajahn had the novices share their experiences with letting go. Like when I went to go buy something for my mother and it was raining so hard and I didn't get an umbrella with me. Yeah. What did you when do I came back home, my mom said, stay outside until you're dry. Pra Ajahn Gewali had the novices prepare themselves for the upcoming Dhamma expedition at Wat Chat. I, I had like I'm going on Armstrong, like in the beginning it doesn't rain very much, like but like then and you always think I hope it stops, it, I hope it won't, I won't get wet, and it, but it, the Armstrong keeps going on and the and the rain gets more and more, and then you pick up the umbrella and then the wind comes and you get more and more wet and 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 then you still hold on to this idea it should stop it should stop but I, I really want to get back to the monastery without being completely wet but the sky doesn't listen to you it just kind of pours more and more and then at one point you just have to let go and you just have to say okay i'm wet now after the dharma discussions the novices thanked pra Ajahn and bid them farewell. In yesterday's Dhamma story session, Pra Ajahn continued with the narration of the life of the Buddha from the dispensation of the Dhamma until his great passing. Teacher Gonkiat illustrated the story through sand painting for a clearer understanding. Following his enlightenment, the Buddha did not teach his Dhamma to anyone because what he knew could not be communicated in words. Then the king of the gods, Brahma, convinced the Buddha to show the Dhamma to the people of the world by explaining that the people who were still bound by desires would be able to understand the Dhamma of the Buddha. After considering this, he set out to preach his sermon. The Buddha spent 35 years preaching the Dhamma until he reached Parinibbana, or the final deathless state. After his great passing, Buddhism continued to spread far and wide until today. Before the Dhamma session ended, Pra Ajahn talked about the monastic principles, which include practicing Tutanga, to be more patient and detached from desires tidying up the dwelling, washing Pra Ajahn's feet, and cleaning his alms bowl. The lessons the novices have learned have been physical and mental preparation before the upcoming expedition in the next two days.
There are only nine days left for the novices to practice monastic principles. The lessons for the week of let go will help them eliminate their ego before leaving the monkhood. At this time in Thailand, it is the rainy season. The rain is scattered over most areas, including the northeast. The novices have already performed their monastic tasks in the rain several times, including this morning. The rain showed no sign of stopping, but the little novices could still perform their tasks well, even though the path they were walking on was soaking wet. Self-control amidst turbulence is another challenge the novices must train themselves in under any conditions, in order to understand the impermanence of things, which is the cause of suffering. Although it was raining, there were still Buddhists waiting to offer alms. Offering alms to monks is a way to preserve Buddhism. Thai people believe that giving alms is a way to collect merit for themselves and other people. They can even send this merit to people who have passed away. It's held to be a good way to start the day with delight. The novices gathered at the food hall. While waiting for the food, Pra Ajahn had the novices review the chants to prepare for the upcoming Dhamma expedition to Wat Chat. Monks and novices have a crucial duty to spread Buddhism. Memorizing basic chants, either salutation to the Triple Gem or other blessing chants is truly important as it shows that they have learned Buddhism and the Dhamma. Many novices separated into groups to practice the chants with Praajan's assistance. Many of them could recite the verse without looking at the chant book. However, chanting requires harmony between the monks and novices. Okay, forget that.
For some groups, Pra'ajan applied different methods of practice. The novices practiced a sitting meditation to prepare themselves for breakfast. Pra'ajan offered advice to the novices regarding the sitting meditation and reminded some of them not to lose mindfulness. Keep mindfulness with your breathing. When you're breathing in, you feel it. You feel it, the air coming in. When you're breathing out, you feel it, the air going out. Ati, don't move. Close your eyes, Ati. Ati, close your eyes and no move. Ati, you cannot mindful, Ati. You like to look around, so your thought, nah, not, you cannot let go your thought. Vincent, this today, this week, let let go, let go week. You can let go. Yes. You can let go. Go. Before the meal, Pra Ajahn cautioned many of the novices not to spend too much time scooping the food. When you go to a banana cha, they have a lot of food, you know, at the table. The table is very long. They have a lot of food. So you go, you are not go to shopping, eh? You not go to shopping, see what food is it, what food that, can I eat or not, can I finish or not, no. You just go to take what you can eat and what you can finish it. The monk will not waiting for you, eh? like, like here. Eh? Like here, we all waiting for you. You see? On this morning, Pra'ajan had the novices recite the chant before the meal without reading, as he had informed them yesterday. Throughout the past three weeks, the novices have trained themselves through lessons and activities to prepare for Dutanka over the next three days at Wat Banana Chat, where the practice will be more intense and serious. After the meal, the novices clean the alms bowls. (music) 
some of the novices volunteered to wash Pra-Ajan's hands. While the novices were washing Pra-Ajan's hands, they lost mindfulness and dropped the alms bowl, distorting it. So Pra-Ajan used this opportunity to teach them the Dhamma. He broke my bowl, see? It's okay. So, okay, this week is a, a let go week. I have to let go. <laughs> e e equanimity, right? Pra Ajahn had the novices clean the food hall area. Some of the novices helped Pra Ajahn sweep the nearby areas. Others helped clean the altar table. In this morning's picture storytelling session, Pra Ajahn told the novices about the monastic tasks of Wat Ba Nana Chat and Wat Nong Ba Pong. Pra Ajahn began by telling the novices of the monastic routines of Wat Ba Nana Chat. This is Wat Ba Nana Chat, 15 years ago. This is early morning. Have you heard? Anyone heard? Two thirty. 2.45, he have a bell ring. Tang, 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 tang. You wake up, brush your teeth, wash your face, and go to the sala. Tomorrow, you stay one night. That means uh, the 19. 19, morning, 20 morning, 21 morning. Or wake up, 2.45. 3.30, chanting. And then, 4 o'clock, sitting meditation. 3.30 to 4. Just half an hour chanting. No, after no, that, meditating. after that, four o'clock to five o'clock. Pra Ajahn explained to the novices about what Banana Chat's tradition of going for alms. The early morning, the, the lay people will be waiting. Here must uh, three kilometer. I think oh. you no need to go. You go to the nearest one. How <laughs> many kilometers? Like one more this, step. This one three. One when step. you go go there three, coming back three, six kilometers. You see? So many people waiting. Every year, everyone, every day, uh, you know. The early morning, they cook their food and waiting for the monk. So you have to practice good, practice well. Pra Ajahn mentioned the characteristics of foreign monks, which the novices should follow. This one is international. All the, all the monks uh, like you. They like to ask, Ajahn, why cannot I do? Huh? Why, why cannot I do this? Why cannot I do that? They like to ask. So here we can argue. And then the teacher will, will tell you why you cannot do. The Buddha. The Buddha said, how? We, because why? They have the reason. They have the story. So every story, everything we learn here. Pra Ajahn also explained how the monks have meals at Wat Ba Nana Chat. We getting the food uh, is followed, followed by the by the elders. It's not by the oldest, uh, it's by the elders. Who or them first, he get the food first. Okay, this is the buffet in, in the forest. Buffet. Buffet. Uh, this is the buffet in the forest. So here uh, not enough. Not enough long to put the food, to put the dishes. So they have to, they have the big table, the long table at the kitchen. Let them to put the food. When the monk getting all the food and waiting, sitting meditation, waiting for the lay person now. So, you see the western? Yeah. Uh, the western yeah. all behind. Why western all behind? Because they are doing the last. Because it take five pieces. Then he showed the novices pictures of animals at Wat Ba Nana Chat. When at the night time, uh, no, when you sleep, uh, you were you were heard that uh, chicha chicha. Oh, somebody coming. And then you go chicha chicha. Then you you take the torchlight. Wait, nobody. Where? Where have the sound? And 
And then when you sleep, uh, he chit chat, chit chat again, you know. And, and then you would thought that this is gold something. But you don't know because underneath there is the, <laughs> is the lizard. <laughs> yeah, underneath. After that, Pra Ajahn showed them pictures of life at Wat Nong Bapong. One of the pictures reflected what the novices would be able to do if they trained well enough. Now we got to teach Tama. Buddha, Tama, Sangha, Tama. We go to give a talk and then we let the novice sit at the front. <laughs> we sit behind. So the monk, uh, monk and novice, uh, they have their duty also. Their duty is practice, practice well and help people and teach people. Pra Ajahn reminded the novices of the monastic principles before allowing them to go to Wat Banana Chat. Akana Tukavata, or Incoming Bhikkhu's Duty, is one of the 14 sets of Kantaka Vata, which indicates the monastic duties. Praajan explained the meaning of Akana Tukavata, which is the duty of visitors traveling to other temples. Some of the novices provided examples of good visitors for their friends. Akantuka is when we go to a new place. Like, you need to ask for like, the toilet, uh, ask to see the, like, new, the head monk, pay respect to the head monk. And also, because you're going to, if you're going to another monastery, you need to wear uh, one shoulder open. Mm. Uh, ask for a place to like, stay. Mm. And like, there's more, but I don't really remember all of them. Pra Ajahn then explained the meaning of Avasikavata, the resident bhikkhu's duties, to the novices. So Avasikavata is the visitor monks who ask the monastery, uh, giving uh, respect, asking for. So you meet firstly, you go and put your. While you're first time visiting a monastery, you go in, you ask for an uh, elder monk uh, who's responsible for uh, the monk who visit. So you go and meet him. Pra Ajahn also explained the remaining set of vata, such as kamika vata, or the departing bhikkhu's duties. This is the duty for those who prepare for departure. They must tidy up their stuff and assign someone to take care of their dwelling. Moreover, Pra Ajahn explained wachakuti, or the toilet duties, to the novices. Before the class ended, Pra Ajahn taught the novices how to do the five-limbed prostration properly. In this morning's lesson, Pra Ajahn emphasized the monastic tasks of the novices so they could behave properly during the Dhamma expedition at Wat Ba Nana Chat.
In this afternoon's learning process, the novices learn through the art process for Dhamma activity, inspired by Tamasak Lupua Pitagun, or O. Firstly, O asks the novices to define the meaning of let go, which is the topic of the fourth week of their ordination. upsets you and you have a bad feeling and you should not keep the bad feeling because it's kind of suffering and letting go of bad feeling feelings and forgiving them will be better so you could be friends again and so you don't have to fight. Letting go is to know that everything comes and goes. No, nothing is permanent. Knowing that nothing is permanent, we should not get stick to an item or person knowing that one day they will leave us, so that is why we should learn how to let go. Yes, very good. You can let go of attachments in your mind, you can let go of bad hobbies, and you can let go of bad things. That's very good. Then O asked the novices to think about a word to convey the meaning of let go, and then draft a painting of their own. O gave additional suggestions to the novices. Anything. Read, go back. If you don't know, go back to what you've been written. And get one word from there. One word from what you've been written. If you have so many choices that you cannot make, you put it down. And you, what, which one of them tell you more about let go? You pick that one and let go the rest. Once the novices finished drafting, O had them create their works by using mixed media from nature. It can be different. You just use that as a, a main idea. It don't, don't have to be the same because the sketch and the real life is not the same. Things are not the same. Okay? You can put more details, you can put less details. The novices gathered their ideas. This activity was an opportunity for the novices to exercise both the left side of their brain, which is responsible for their logical reasoning, and the right side, which is responsible for their creativity through various processes. They also learned hand-eye coordination. In addition, this activity helped improve their imagination, geometrical and dimensional thinking process, and also systemic work planning. the novices presented their works to their friends. Many of them used their own experiences to explain let go in their own ways. This is DJ. That's <laughs> novice DJ there. And this is me. That's you. Okay, so DJ hit me with a broom, hit on my head here. Okay, and? And he just let go about it by saying sorry, yes. and I forgive him. And you let go too by forgiving him. Yeah. Wow. Monk. Mm -hmm. He was he was during cleaning. Yes. He was using a, a chicken thingy to what do you call a uh, oh, the other dust yeah duster yes but that looks like a broom a duster to clean the cupboard yes. and he opened the cupboard to clean the inside 
and he accidentally hit the stick of the the stick of the the boom the the duster. Oh, yeah, the duster. Hit the glass. That is very expensive and very delicate. So and, it's very important and, piece that yeah. he he broke. And and now the, the 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 monk broke it, his servant, and the Buddha, uh the the Buddha's upadhak. He made a drop, and the Buddha was like, finally. He came in and he's like, pat on the back. He's like, finally, I don't have to take care of this delicate piece anymore. I can just be free. I don't have to come, to come and clean it every day. Okay. I, I mean, I wouldn't let you. Yeah, so that's a let go. Some of the novices created work that presented their unique concept of let go. What is this? To let go of the past. This is a... This is a very big hot tunnel mm. that goes all the way down to a volcano. Okay, a volcano. So this is a volcano. Okay, if you can see that the inside, because from where I am, I can see that the inside here. Can people come and have a closer look? Is a, yeah, you can come to have a closer look if you want to. Inside there's a leaf that says pass. So this man let go of the pass and threw it in there. And then, then, then he got a Then he seat. moved on because he haven't had anything uh, to eat for 26 days. 26. So he make his lunch, onion soup. Yes. And then after the onion soup, he moved on. So this is like a man mm -hmm. with a key in his hand and a key in his hand and the lock here. And the lock is like, and this is like all the old this habits, okay. feelings, anger, and unuseful stuff. If you want to go, you have to cut that loose and yes. then go. How? So we should like let go of our old habits and even if we like it, mm -hmm. but sometimes uh, things that we like may even hold us down. So mm -hmm. we must learn how to let it go. Mm. This is like the bird of peace and it stops. So it's like when you let go, you have peace with other people. So you don't fight with them and you so you don't hate other people. Mm -hmm. And uh, these things at the front are like bullets. Bullets? Yeah, trying to stop the bird from making peace. But mm -hmm. but um, the bird is immortal so it can't die. Mm -hmm. uh, so it so it so it makes <laughs> So it makes peace for other people, mm -hmm. so that they can live happily. What was your keyword? Peace. Peace. Right. Other novices incorporated the Dhamma into their works. This is the Buddha, and to show that he's like perfectly enlightened, um, he his hands are open because it shows that he's letting go of everything that's bad. Okay. And like in this tree. Um, when, when the leaves are usable, when they can do photosynthesis, mm -hmm. the tree keeps the leaves, but when they die out, um, they let go of the leaves. Mm -hmm. And on the leaves, there says things like burden and bad feelings, which I don't have um, space to write, so I wrote bad feeling, apostrophe, apostrophe. Okay, so and much, much more. Yes. Right. Oops. And your keyword was? Detach. Detach. Like so the leaves detaching from the tree. Before the activity ended, O oh explained what he had gained from joining this activity with the novices. First of all, I have to say thank you very much for teaching me the word let go in your point of view. I know this word in just one direction and then you, you just gave me more and more um, explanation about this word. Pra Ajahn summarized and gave a moral to the novices. What you have to let go in, in, in the early morning? Let go of laziness, but we put more on diligence. So we can also conclude about letting go is we let go of some bad emotion, bad behavior, and put more on or keep going on good behavior. The novice representative thanked O oh for sharing his knowledge with them. I would like to thank you for coming here and teaching us about Dhamma through art and uh, how, how do we express it into, the, into art. 
Thank you for today for teaching us. We learn a lot today. The fun part was making my orders and and it was so fun. It made me want to do it, paint more and do some more. But at the first time, I don't want to use clay. But the finally, I use clay and clay make it more beautiful than I thought. Yes, it is. So it changed, and now, now it's beautiful now and. And I want to do more too. Today was yet another day that the novices gained experience from daily routines and activities that allowed them to broaden their visions both directly and indirectly, which will be essential for living their lives after leaving the monkhood. We would like to invite all Buddhists to an alms offering of dried food for True Little Monk, a wisdom training program for novices, at 6 o'clock a.m. at Wat Ba Sang Am, Det Udom, Ubon Rachatani. Please follow the Dhamma expedition and pay homage to Ajahn Chah's memorial on the 18th of July, 2018, at Wat Nong Ba Pong, Ubon Rachatani. Please follow the summary of daily routines tomorrow at 9 o'clock p.m. Follow our worldwide streaming on www.truelittlemonk.com and Facebook True Little Monk. The dual language broadcast is available on True Visions channels 60 and 99 and True Visions HD channels 119 and 333 and the True Blue Banya channels. The dual language live broadcast is accessible 24 hours a day on the True ID and True Blue Banya applications. All episodes of the daily real documentary of True Little Monk are available on YouTube.